Hey guys, thanks for joining us as we get going on our water sealing of our ICF. If you missed the episode where we actually set up the ICF forms and poured concrete, I'll leave a link above where you can go check that out. So we're starting at the corners at the bottom, peeling off the backside of the cells adhesive uh, water shield membrane and just uh, shingling it one layer over the top of the other. When he did the long edge of the corner, he needed to peel off all of the backing to get it to fold around the corner and then rolling it with this real, this is a really dinky roller that I had. Best one I could find. If you're going to do this, I would recommend getting a bigger roller with a longer handle so you can get a little more leverage. But anyway, starting down the long sides, it is much easier to just peel a little bit of the backing off of the top and then as you work your way down continue peeling off the backing of, off of it because uh, this stuff is really sticky and will once it adheres to itself it's it's done which is kind of an interesting thing so i've seen a lot of these different brands we're using uh suprema but with all of these they offer a and recommend even putting a primer over the ICF first. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why. As long as you have a clean surface, this stuff is incredibly sticky. Once it sticks to that ICF, it's there to stay. And besides that, you're going to be putting some form of siding over the top of it anyway. So the idea of needing a primer, I just don't get. Uh, here I am doing one of a few different penetrations I have and so with it rather than doing a full length down that would be much easier to handle doing it in two sections measuring and cutting out a hole for a lower section getting that into place and then doing a top section it just seemed like too much to handle if I was going to just do it in one piece and this is if it's not obvious this is a definitely a two-person job to be able to handle these pieces and get them lined up and press into place with out sticking them someplace that you don't want them but yeah just starting at one corner and working our way down making sure to roll out all of the any sort of bubbles or creases you might get and again this is why it's uh, imperative to have two people to to prevent as me or prevent creases as much as possible as you work your way down so here it is, that's done. So on to putting a siding on. So now that we've finished waterproofing uh, the ICF with the Suprema in this case, we need to cover it with something uh, both below, what's gonna be below grade and above grade. And we'll probably have like a foot or foot and a half above grade and the rest will be below grade and of course have a French drain, a French drain down at the bottom. And we weren't really sure what to use for a coating for that. I've seen people use aluminum flashing or a polymer coating like a tough coat, but I didn't like the metal coating. I just don't like really the look of that as a personal thing. And the tough coat, the polymer coatings, I've heard negative things about them, but they are not really long lasting. Um, so we decided to go with a cement backer board, in our case, DuraRock and brand. And Makes me a little nervous since I've not seen anybody do that, but I don't know why you can't do that. So we're going to go, go ahead and do that. And then we figure that that whatever siding we decide to do over that, whether we just want to uh, put, a, put a thin set over that or a stucco over whatever we want, we can do it. And then we have a, you know, what is effectively like concrete on the outside, like a traditional uh, concrete footing. Cement board or backer board typically comes in three by five sheets which is plenty big enough being made out of concrete they're fairly heavy i don't think you'd want to handle one much bigger than that but being that they're only five feet long they didn't quite reach the full length of our five foot four inch stem wall we just figured that the bottom four inches would be fine on its own since we're going to have the french drain down there and filter fabric anyway and i've actually seen some people not put anything on the sides even a water barrier which i think is a big mistake so we think we're doing great with uh, with our cement backer board and we just shimmed it up along the bottom as we went along screwing it in. So now from one of the more delicate parts of putting up the backer board, the cement backer board is drilling a hole through it, a sheet of it, 
before one of my penetrations. Hope I marked it right, because these things are kind of expensive. I don't want to screw them up. So that just went really smoothly. Usually I mess something up and have to either redo it or at least make some sort of small adjustment. But in this case, it was dead on and fit absolutely perfectly. The ICF blocks have flanges just below the surface spaced every 16 inches that you can run screws into to hold on your siding. And they're really strong. Supposedly they are like running a screw into a two x four. The caveat being that as they're made of plastic, if you run the screw too fast, the friction heat buildup will melt the plastic and reduce their holding ability. So you kind of got to go easy on the running of the screws, which obviously makes it take a little bit longer. But with Marissa and I working together, we made fairly quick work of it. And when I say fairly quick work, well, it probably took us the better part of two days. But here it is finished and we think it turned out great. Now on to attaching our sill plates. We started work on our sill plates late one evening by laying out chalk lines and got one end piece put on before calling it quits for the day only to have it rain overnight. Fortunately, most of the chalk lines were still visible. However, the one sill plate we put on, I realized I put it on upside down, crown down. So you can see water holding it here. So first order business was to get it flipped around the right way, which means it's gonna have a second set of holes in it, one of them being unusable. To align the sill plates, Marissa and I would each take an end of a pressure treated two by eight and balance it on top of the anchor bolts. Then we'd align the inside edge with our chalk mart on the concrete using a carpenter square. At that point, I would go along and hit the pressure treated board above each anchor bolt, leaving an impression that could then be drilled out and making it then fit perfectly over the anchor bolts. Once we got all the sill plates on, then we had to pull them back off to put in the sill sill, which is this yellow foam padding. And I wondered what that was for. So I looked it up and discovered that it is basically a moisture barrier, keeping any sort of condensation from the concrete from seeping up to the sill plate into your studs, causing them to rot prematurely. I know I ran through all this pretty quickly and didn't show a lot of detail. So if you have any questions, suggestions, or thoughts, please leave them in the comments below. Also subscribe and like if you haven't already. Well, next up is floor joist and decking, but we'll save that for another day. Until we see you next time, be safe and keep building your dreams.